In this video I will be teaching you how to play the Bumblebee by Rensky Korsakov arranged by Rachmaninoff. The first thing that you should know is the chromatic scale and it's like this. It's very important that you know the basic fingering. So Maybe before you attend the piece, practice this fingering. One, three, one, three, one. Two. Three, one, three, one, three, one, two. And then descending, you do the same thing. The piece is in two, so we're gonna always count one, two, one, two, one. Two. Now let's get to the actual notes now that we know that. So we're going to start with the left hand on E and then we're going to do three, one, three, one, three, two, one, two, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, and then it starts over. So we could subdivide it in groups. So we could start with the left hand and do this group. That's, you can see that that group is descending. Now after that, we're going to have a D against that and descend again. C against that and descend again. And we continue a whole line all the way to E. And then the pattern begins again. So let's do it one more time. So we do accent here. That's the one, two, one, two. And at the beginning, it's important that you emphasize the one and the two, even though the one is a stronger beat and the second beat is a weaker beat. So we're gonna do one, two, one, two, one. Last time, one, two, one, two. Okay, if we continue from there, we'll see that the pattern is the same. So I'm gonna just give you how to practice this pattern. The first thing maybe that you should do is accent, so we can emphasize every other note. Loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, all the way through. Then it starts over. Now we can do the opposite. Now we could emphasize every four notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So we could start working on the speed. So we could start slow and fast. We could do the opposite. Now every four notes to D, to C, and then maybe we try all the way through. After you have that, it's the same descending, so once we play E, we start over, same thing, and then E again, and we're gonna cut the pattern a little bit, so we're gonna do just here, and repeat, same fingering, one, That is like an introductory part to the whole piece. Now I'm gonna play it very slowly one more time and tell you a few pointers that is important. So we start loud. The pattern that goes against the flow, this one we emphasize it when we practice. Emphasize. This one don't need to. Same here. Emphasize there. Emphasize there. Then we do one, two, pattern is the same, third pattern is the same way, and fourth pattern. And he wrote, starting on the second pattern, diminuendo, so if you're playing a little bit 
less now. Gradually. Less. Sometimes it's hard when you get to the speed to maintain that and have that kind of control. Another thing that is important is when you play the chromatic scale, once your finger creates the sound, make sure that you are completely relaxed. Because we need the fingers to be relaxed for the next note that's going to come up. If you are tense here, it's very hard to play this. If you are tense here on the thumb and you keep holding it, it's hard to play this. So it's important that you are very relaxed. And the other thing is, try to relax by groups. Relax here. Relax. Play and relax here. A little up-down movement there. can do that then we're ready to begin the piece so what we'll have is the same pattern and I'm gonna give you the notes I think that the most important part for this is the fingering so I'm gonna do three two one two one that's one pattern descending so now here we use the fourth finger because we have a a, a fourth interval one two three four so when we do descending up to there. So learn this pattern very well. Now once we get to E it's gonna repeat. And don't forget the finger in three two one three two one two one and then four three two one. You could still divide it in two. This is one, this is another. Then we repeat. But once we get to C you're gonna go ascending and you'll do one, two, one, two, three. Descending the same way and the same way here also. And then here it's gonna change. So maybe what I'll do with this is play it very slowly from E. a little turn different. Again, it's important that you practice the same ways I showed you at the beginning. Accents and also speed exercises. And when you play it, just think on the third finger. Let's say if we do one of the rhythms, we could do this. Slow and fast. We could do the opposite. Again, if you are tense, you will see that you will feel some resistance. You should not get tired when you play this. And the other thing is, he wrote very well there, pianissimo, which is, means very light. So that's going to help you because doing less pressure is key to play this piece. If you start too deep on the key, when you get to the middle of the piece or the, towards the end, you, you will feel very tired. So you won't be able to play it if you are too tired afterwards. So save the energy for later by playing very light. The other thing is try to play like if you are grabbing the notes rather than hammering. What I mean is I play this note and I kind of do in and out movements a little bit. So I go in and out each time to adjust the hand to the key. That's very important to do. And he put ligero, so that means very light touch and quick because we're playing pressed as all. Okay, let me give you a little bit the harmony there because putting it together very slow is not difficult. For that, you have to know the A minor scale and the A minor scale is like this. Mm -hmm. 
Now from that chord, what he's going to do is bring this E here and bring the A below. And we have what we call a tenth. Now some people have a big hand, they could punch it all together. Some people they have a small hand, so they would have to kind of do this movement, split it. In this case, I'm going to play it all filled in. And we have one of those, and also for this passage, we have a D major chord. Just like this, D, F sharp, A. A minor, if you think about it, on the fourth degree, we, don't, we have a D minor, but we could raise that note, and that's what he does here. We just raise the fourth chord. And by the way, we're going from the one, the A minor chord, to the fourth chord, which usually is D minor, but we raise it. So, then we have A minor, two, A minor, D major, A minor, one. A minor, D major, A minor. And we have all the notes that we need to play this. So, now what we're going to do is count. So we do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. It's important to count the one and the two because the one is stronger. So when you play the A minor chord, you will bring it a little bit stronger beat. So one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one. So I'm emphasizing a little bit more. Now I think it's time we could put it together and we start with the E. Notice that the E contained on the A minor chord is also on the melody, so it matches harmonically perfect here. So we'll start. We do the whole turn and then A minor again matching that note. The D is gonna match the C, which it makes it a D7. A minor again on E. And the same pattern repeats to C, and we have that. So think now that we have A minor, and sometimes we have a D7 there. Some more information there to think about it. I'm going to just play it through and tell you what it matches without stopping. So one E and A minor. Again, matches, C matches, E again matches, C and then E, okay? I think at this point, if you did all the practice before, you could start with the speed exercise. So you could start trying to play like this, slow and fast. Also, you could do four notes. And then just play it. And it's important that you do the one uh. One, uh, uh. On the A minor, give a little accent. Okay? Again, if you can't play like that, you could do this. Let go of the chord. Okay? In this case, I'm just punching it all together. Let's continue now to the next measure. So, when we play this, now we're going to learn just the finger for the right hand. We do this. Two, one, three. One, three, two, one. That's the next measure. So on the switch here, I like to have the thumb there. And then we're going to go there. I'm going to give you four measures. I'm going to continue. So after this, I go to C. Three, one, three, one, three, one, two, one. So. Last time, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, one. Now we're gonna take the A minor chord now, but instead of playing it like this, we're gonna do E and A, and we're gonna run it through. So let's say C. And that 
that's it. We went there from an A minor chord to an E7 here to an A minor. Okay? E major is part of the scale. And if we have the 7, we have the D here. That's why we have D, G sharp, B, and then E here. Okay, I'm gonna play this measure and then play all together. Okay, a little bit from before. And we got there. Now we continue now, we go two, one, three, one, three, two, one. And it's important that you go ahead and write all this fingering on the sheet of paper that you might have with this piece. If you already have some fingers and you can play it well enough, that's fine. Don't have to make the work to change the fingering. Or you could try practicing on the ways I've given you and see what happens. If it goes by a week and you don't see improvements, just change the fingering. As simple as that. Let's continue now. And we have these two patterns. One descending and the turn and descending again. So. And we use the same chords, remember the A minor, very simple, it was like this, but we do the inversion here, and that's what we use on the left hand, and then D minor flipped, so instead of this one, we'll punch here, so, together. And that's it. Next one now, we do one more and then we'll review everything together. Now we have C, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, and we get there. Okay, the A minor chord is going to be flipped, so we're going to use this one, and then we use the E7 again here. So we're going to do. Then here we're gonna change the color A major we're gonna have. Okay? So let's do it there. Now let's practice a little bit the left hand. So we could have one, two, 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 one. One. When you do the right hand, you can learn it by itself separate, but I prefer doing a little snippet and put it together. But you could still practice the whole right hand like this. Slowly. When you put it together, we're gonna see where it goes. With the beat, we usually match the note or we have a rest, so. Crescendo a little bit there. And we get there. Remember to get the speed very loose and try not, not to grab the notes, just hold enough pressure to keep the note, but don't press too hard so it allows you to play the other note. So. And we get there to the new section. Remember, you could practice the whole measure quick and take pauses. For instance, way there, way there. So that way you worry about some notes and you think on A notes together and play those notes and then you think on the next A notes together and, and play those notes. Because once it goes quicker you will see the notes coming and you have to know where to go so you have to train that at the same time. Let's continue now, let's do the fingering again for here 
we get to the A and we're gonna go descending now. So we did all this. Now we got there. Now we're gonna do four, three, one, two, one. And then four, three, two, three. Four, three, one, two, one, four, three, two, three. And we have two chords, the A major here. Like this, remember that when it's open like this, you can split them. And we have the D minor chord. The A stays, and we just move the tenth. Together now. That's it. And then, if you are used to now uh, getting a feel for the speed, you could just play quick there. The way it's gonna be. We continue the fingering from there. So we did this. Now finger for this. Three, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Again, see this chromatic scale now, instead of one, three, one, two, that's totally fine. Any finger I'm giving you, always try. Maybe you're not used to the fingering, but always try. Can I play that fast? If it runs easily, that means it's a good fingering. It, it works for me. I hope it works for you though. Now, you can see here that if I put fourth, fifth finger, I'm trying to stay away from this shorter fingers and weaker fingers because it's much more difficult to play there like that. You know what I mean? So I try to... Can I play with this finger in quicker? So if you have those fingers, change them up, you know? Right away. Because you'll never be able to play like this. So, now when you get here you have a G chord. The F is taken with the right hand and this note has flipped so we match it and then we go back to D minor here flipped and I do those two chords 4 to 1 4 to 1 so and then it just repeat the same pattern so we have the ascending pattern Now here, repetition of the same. So we have same fingering again. So we started like this. Repetition there. Again. I will discuss the fingering anyway. So three, two, one, two, one, four, three, two, three, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The only thing that changes a little bit is the chords. So when you do it together, you have this chord first, switching here, and remember this is a rest. Sometimes I hold the notes longer because I'm just want to hold it so you see the chord from above when I punch it. Because if I do this, it's too quick sometimes. So there is a rest on G. Rest. Now here chord, rest, chord D minor, rest, again now we open this chord D minor, and then we get to D minor here. To practice this same principle, let me see if I practice for you a little bit, so slow and fast. your hand stay loose the whole time. Opposite. Four notes. Uh, let's try quick now. And remember what I mentioned. One, one, two, A little bit of an accent on the one, so one, two, one, 
two, one, two, one, two, one. Okay? Hope you got this. I played the left hand, I played the right hand, and I played it together. So if you don't understand something, rewind it. And remember, try not to use the fifth finger on any of these scales. Next part now, we have this. So we start three, two, one, three, one here. Notice that the hand, every four groups, I want to think a little bit. I play here, I go down on A, and then I go up, release the tension, and go down here. I'm exaggerating, don't have to do it that big of a movement, but we'll go up, down, down here, and up. So when I go a little bit faster, there. There, there, and there, there's a little something up and down that helps me play it. We do the left here now, D minor chord, same chord, remember that this is part of the, that, right? Now here we're going to go to B flat diminish, or we could call it something else, in this case I would like to call it like that. Now any minor chord have a diminished right there okay so that's what he does this going here then here F major A7 and D minor now if I play it all the way together like this matches matches here remember the rest matches and matches and matches Okay, let's do it uh, a little bit faster. Sometimes test it out, see if it works. Maybe you're not used to it, practice slowly, and then you could test it. See if the fingering I'm giving you uh, works. Next one. actually pretty much the same so we do the same pattern that's one that's one so it's important you group them see and then you could do rhythmical that you say you have this chords for the left hand D minor we're gonna have a G minor here that is flipped. Then we're gonna do the D minor, A7, and D minor again. So have this. An important thing is every chord I ever played in this piece or any other piece, always remember, you are from above here and you use gravity, you just let your arm fall, fall down. Up, down, here, up, down again, and up, down. That's it. Now, let's put it together. So on A, we have this. That's one. Here we have another one. And then we're going to switch. So, same practicing tips. Opposite and fast. Then it's gonna change the pattern. So maybe what I'll do now is play very slowly all the way through until there, and so you have an idea how to put it together. So I will measure every other note instead of the one, two, every other note just to make it slow as possible. we do the pattern third fourth and then we start here pianissimo I'm playing a little bit louder just because to show you the notes crescendo 
crescendo e crescendo no? And that's what I call the first part. If you master that part and if you could play it fast, then everything else is going to be easier because it's the same technique going through. Remember that sometimes you have to do repetition a lot to get these patterns and the turns down to where you can see it coming. Sometimes you cannot see it because it's too soon. The next part doesn't need to be explained very much. All we have is after this turn, that A there and I like to jump and do one two one two one two one some people do with two hands just a matter of tension I sometimes I tense up there so I like the one two better then we have an accent on G sharp and B flat and then this patterns so it's back and forth the same The same thing here was so I like to slide here and like play this when I'm there I like to slide play a and then do one two again accent same notes and I get to that a that's gonna move so all together this will be accent fifth any changes that's a little variation there from what we were doing so if you practice same practicing all together okay now once you play the thumb we're gonna have a little pattern on the right hand So it's A, two, one, two, there. It's easy. It's just down. One, so it's three, one, two. And the accent on A. Left and it's gonna have what we call a chromatic scale, but it's gonna descend in both, hand, both uh, notes. And it gets to an augmented chord, F augmented. So we have this on the left. Three, two, four, one. Then you go inside, and then you jump here with the accent. Okay. So while you start here, you do just that, and then it's chromatic scale. And that's it. And what we do on top of that is add the left in. So we go up. And we get to D major. I hope this video was helpful and if you enjoyed subscribe. Also, thank you very much and all my supporters from Patron and Buy Me A Coffee.